We are at the 61st parallel. This is the frozen Hay River, the middle of February. I was told to dress warmly because normal temperatures here are 40 below. That's minus 40, folks. Right now, it's a balmy minus 10. So I'll have a few notes on the weather and the snow. The weather could be bitterly cold. And like I said, it's only minus 10 here. It's a fantastic, almost uh, shorts and flip-flops weather. Uh, although you can see snow on the ground, it's not much. It's maybe a foot deep in some places, but uh, or less in most places, like six inches. So that's, uh, I don't know, 20 centimeters, whatever, something like that. It's not much, so it's not deep. This is maybe not a desert, but uh, an arid area with not much precipitation. It is uh, very dry here. The air is very dry. You can see across the air the floating ice crystals here. F ice floats is, is what I call these. You can see they are falling or moving across the lens here against the uh, dark background. So it's not snowing at the moment. These aren't snowflakes. It's just any amount of moisture that's in the air just freezes immediately and drifts across. Like I said, snow isn't deep. Look at the roof. It's 10, maybe 20 centimeters tops. More like 10. So the little snow that does fall compact. The first eight days I could comfortably walk around with these shoes on, even in the snow. That's not happening anymore because we had some more snowfall. It's looking like this but deep and it's piling up spectacularly on vehicles and rooftops so my initial one foot depth of snow doesn't apply anymore that's how stuff looks like it's just super deep so let me set the record straight I'm gonna show you some data about average precipitation throughout the year and stuff and this has been cleaned up already multiple times so yeah I need my boots back on so during my stay in Canada's Arctic in February I had a wide range of temperatures and I'm gonna go through this really briefly here just so you know what to expect if you have to go there and spend any length of time this is in metric Canada is in metric but here is a little handwritten chart of temperatures during my stay the temperature varied from plus 5 degrees Celsius that's 41 degree Fahrenheit down to minus 30 that's minus 22 Fahrenheit so it started like so for the first eight days it was quite pleasant and warm and temperature plummeted and then another eight days here and then a last eight days something in the minus 25 minus 30 range something like that it was gradually just plummeting over my three week stay span so which one of these is normal and usual and traditional? This is printed from the Canadian Met Office, uh, Environment Canada or some such thing, and just a screenshot of, of things. You can see here the temperatures on this side, and it's metric only Celsius degrees. So in the month of February, which I spent there, the black line here represents the daily average temperature so what you should be expecting in February is around minus 18 just roughly just eyeballing it there minus 18 but it could get as cold as minus 25 again this might these numbers are averages and so this is how averages work if um, I have one dollar and my brother has three dollars we're poor but uh, on average we have two dollars each who has actually two dollars? Nobody. I have one, he has three. So this is how averages work. Uh, they don't necessarily reflect actual reality. They are averages. So, just because it says minus 25, it doesn't mean that minus 30 doesn't happen. It did for at least 10, ah, for at least eight days while I was there. And it wasn't thawing or warming up after that either from what I hear. So, and here it says it could get as 
warm as minus 15 but like I said when I was there it was plus 5 for about 8 days the first 8 days so that's what I have to say about averages or the nature of averages alright so be prepared for wide temperature fluctuations okay but expect it to be in minus 25 range yeah it's extremely cold I'll have some footage here inserted how I look like or dress like and uh, and what it means uh, to exposed flash okay exposed hands uh, fingers freeze in I don't know uh, 10 minutes 30 minutes something like that seriously so you need to dress up but uh, that's another video as well as what gear works what the green stuff here shows is precipitation total so that includes snowfall and rain now in February in minus 25 there is no rain but statistically there is but it's a uh, and, uh, and the rain amount is here on this side millimeters no inches again metric so what it shows is a very little snowfall or precipitation is expected in january february march but just like uh, just like i noted i walk outside and we have uh i don't know you saw the video that much fresh snow about 20 centimeters so that's way off the scale um, again the nature of averages so this is what you could expect that uh, January February March and April are fairly dry and then uh, precipitation is uh, peaks in August when you could get 60 millimeters of rain that's two and a half inches and then it goes down so that's the green stuff and the temperatures that rise in the summer where it rises the average high temperature is 15 again the nature of averages it doesn't mean it doesn't get 30 but that's just my you know for a few days uh, so the averages there 15 in the middle on the other side I have the same stuff in uh, numerical form here uh, from uh, 1981 to 2010 those this is uh, running the numbers so you can see for the month of February the amount of snowfall is 16.9 centimeters uh, that's about that's about seven inches that's my rough estimate there okay seven inches of snow and uh, we had 12 just when I was there okay so that happens and there's your statistical little bit of rainfall there so the rainfall and the snow plus the snowfall together combined to make the precipitation but uh, about 1.2 centimeter of snow turns into one millimeter of rain so that's how they ended up in precipitation is 14 millimeters so yeah because if you try to add 16.9 and a point two they're not going to be 14.3 so that's uh, that's what happens the snow is converted to rain melted okay so uh, that's uh, how it looks like in uh, in terms of numbers I can just slowly pan over it so you can read it to your heart's content the annual amount of precipitation combined precipitation is just over 300 millimeters uh, yeah, uh, anything around 250 or under 250 is a desert so this one is just a bit over it so that's why I called in my intro video uh, Canada's subarctic uh, uh, an arid place uh, not a lot of vegetation can survive on uh, this little rain or this little precipitation so that's how the climatic data looks like and what else is on it you can find on the same website from Environment Canada so I just have a few more uh, images here on uh, what cold actually means and the rest of the videos that I have on gear and what to wear that's uh, that's uh, on a separate video I'm gonna include a link here the snow here is bizarre or just different from the 49th parallel snow it doesn't stick together it doesn't make a snowman it's quite dusty and uh, because it's dry here it uh, moisture in the snow doesn't lubricate the snow so it's loud squeaky it's, it's even squeaky this way 
So that's what I mean. As it melts in my hand, it does stick together, but normally it just it just doesn't. So that's my introduction here to the sub-Arctic of Canada. That's what I mean by loud tire, or the snow is being loud just under the tires. Snow, however, in the Pacific Northwest where we are is completely different. Again, this is the Pacific Northwest at the 49th parallel. That means 49th latitude. The Pacific Ocean is that way five minutes walking and the Canada-US border is that way two minutes walking. So the type of snow here is different from the snow in the Arctic is that this is a wet, heavy, moist snow. It's still frozen water. Water freezes at zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So the temperature of the snow here is uh, just barely below zero, say minus one, minus two degrees or 30 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. I don't nearly need the heavy gear that I need in the Arctic. And this wet snow here sticks together and it's a perfect snowball material. It doesn't make much of a sound. It does have some sound, but it's not squeaky like the snow in the Arctic. There. It doesn't nearly make that sound. And uh, kids like making snowballs and, uh, and uh, snowmen out of this kind of material. So, and it piles up and we have a lot of it. Right now, we just had another 15 centimeters of snow and then it melts and then another 20 and it melts and then another batch. So here we have easily, depending on elevation, you can have uh, three meters of snow up in the ski hills there, Mount Baker or Whistler, that kind of area. Not so in the Arctic. So we're going back to the Arctic. We're going back to the 61st parallel, okay, where it's cold and the snow is completely different. It's dusty, it's easy to clean it up. This one sticks together and snow plowing and shoveling is miserable because wet snow is heavy. All right, let's go back to the Arctic. This is the 1st of March and this is how I look like as I walk around. It's a little bit of a selfie and it's minus 30 degrees out here without the wind chill and it is windy. And so I need this uh, terrorist gear, but don't worry about it. Everybody is dressed like this. This is how you walk into the bank and in the store, and it's normal here. So, what I can tell you about the light here is that the other day I saw some northern lights, Aurora Borealis, if you like Latin, and uh, my uh, steel shots are nowhere near perfect or spectacular, but I have some of them. And uh, the light that I get in a day on the 1st of March, this is the 1st of March 2017, sun gets up here around 7.30 a.m. and sun sets right now, 6 p.m. So I have almost 12 hours of daylight. It's gonna be about 12 hours of daylight at the Spring Equinox 21st of March in the Northern Hemisphere. Another strange thing you might come across is uh, when people go into the store, vehicles are just left idling, just like this. It has to do, of course, with heat and comfort and surviving and living. Uh, so these vehicles, there's nobody in them. It's not an opportunity to steal it, this one or that one. It's an opportunity, opportunity to leave it alone and walk by. It's all of these vehicles are just idling here while the owners do shopping inside the store here. I'm telling you, this is so cold out here that I can only do about two minutes of filming with bare hand. After that, I gotta stop the camera, stop rolling and the gear up because my hands are hurting, it's so cold. So that's how the weather looks like and that's what's going on with idling vehicles left empty with the key in it in the parking lot.